Their names are Tom Smith and Carolyn Waters and Ruth Canonico. And uh, they will share a piece that they brought today in thinking about uh, the theme, whether directly related to Martin Luther King or uh, to his themes, related to his themes, hopes, and dreams. And uh, Tom, may we begin with you. Here's Tom Smith, most of you know. I knew a man who had a dream The kind romantic fools and visionaries see That all people are deserving of A rule of law founded on love but when dreams meet power Those in command will own the hour Into prison he was thrown A seat on a stone They did not comprehend That seed contained the hope Of women and of men Hope that would not be denied When restraints had been untied Its root found a path that split the rock in half the impossible was done by a seed on a stone Now that he has gone away Why can't we walk the path He showed us yesterday Once in a lifetime Pundits cry That a man and circumstance collide When I despair I seek the fruit his life did bear I find it on a tree that's grown from a seed on a stone Coming from Milford, we have Carolyn Waters to share a song with us. Please welcome Carolyn. So it's been very encouraging um, to hear the stories today and hear how much we've done and how much progress has been made um, because recently. Um, with the events in Ferguson and with Eric Gardner, I've been in this place where I don't understand why the world doesn't stop until we figure all of this out. Um, and what strikes me most about 
how we continue is that it seems to me to be very much, we live our lives very much as we always did. Um, we worry about all the things that uh, we always worried about. And I sit sometimes and I wonder why doesn't the world stop and figure this out and then continue on. Um, so I've written a song. Um, it's still in its preliminary stages, but it sort of um, helps me express this sort of confusion and this wonderment that this stuff is not a bigger deal in this world that we live in. Um, and so this call, this song is called Business as Usual. And uh, please, um, the chorus you'll pick up on, and please join in. If Sons are dying, mothers crying, we're realizing we're not all free. Bullets flying, souls are sighing, we're denying we're not all free. We're not all free. I want to go vegan, my daughter said to me today. Growing up, trying hard to find a way. I say the world is kind, just go out and be yourself. Take your turn. Don't go sitting on the shelf, but our sons are dying, mothers crying. We're realizing we're not all free. Bullet flying, souls are sighing. We're denying we're not all free. We're not all free. Go to the market and get the juice and make some eggs. Then to the cleaners, next to waxing for my legs. A dip for the party, friends dropping by tonight. Pick up kids from school, makes a, make the house look just right. But our sons are dying, mothers crying. We're realizing we're not all free. Bullets flying, souls are sighing. We're denying we're not all free. We're not all free. Keep your head down. Don't draw attention to yourself. You're a black man, not like anybody else. You sacrifice to get home safe at night. You live the lie that we all have equal rights Cause our sons are dying Mothers crying We're realizing we're not all free Bullets flying Souls are sighing we're denying we're not all free. We're not all free. And now we have Ruth Canonico coming from Chelmsford. 
to share a song uh, related to Dr. Martin Luther King. Is this one you had performed uh, yes. before over uh, at the no. library? Okay. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> thank Please, you. Ruth Canonica. I'm going to actually read some things that I read um, because I saw Selma, the film, yesterday afternoon. One of the film Selma's most powerful moments and one frequently singled out by critics for praise captures a secret crucial reassurance murmured into that most tenderly held instrument, the telephone receiver. Afraid of what Selma holds for him, King makes a late night call to his friend and fellow freedom fighter, Mahalia Jackson, portrayed by the versatile vocalist Ladisi, and asks her to share the Lord's voice with him. And she answers by singing his favorite gospel song, which I will sing. But what really touched me is to find out who wrote the song and what was happening. Back in 1932, a gentleman who had a church that he was, uh, the Ebenezer Baptist Church, that he was the head of choir music, choral music, um, was experiencing a loss that most of us would never want to have to experience ever. His young 24-year-old wife, Nettie, died in the delivering of their first child. He was notified by telegram because he was in another town at the time. He had changed from writing what they called dirty blues. I'm not sure who gives it that quality. Um, I think it was just blues. And he was working very hard towards uh, writing spirituals and gospel hymns. But at the news that his wife had died in childbirth and then he raced to, to the hospital and he held his baby before he died the next day. And with a heart broken, he felt he could never write another word again. But a week later, he was in a community center with a friend who was a musician, and he saw a piano, and he sat down, and he thought of a tune that he loved, Amazing Grace, and he started to write, <clears throat> sing out loud words of his heart. And because of the nature of the song that he wrote, gospel music took a turn towards writing not about the next world just that you want to go to when you're a black man in America or a black woman in America growing up and the life you live is so horrendously difficult, but writing from the place of pain towards the God that you ask and implore for help. So he wrote this song. It became <clears throat> Dr. King's, well, it's reputedly his favorite song, although there were many, many songs as part of the uh, movement. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the best I can, but as I said on my way here, I had to sing it for uh, Owen, who was driving me here. Uh, my voice has developed a, a French quality called a frog. I'm not sure why. <laughs> but I'll sing it, and I'll repeat the first verse again at the end, and then if you wish, you can join me there. I've listened to a lot of renditions of this. I've slowed it down considerably because of what I've heard. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand, lest I fall. 
Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home, let me stand, lead me home let me stand i'm tired i'm weak i am worn i am tired i am weak i am worn through the storm through the night through the storm through the night lead me on to the light lead me on to the light take my hand precious lord lead me home thank you walking down the street People look away, a feeling of contempt in their eyes, at dirty faces with nothing to say. Even with handmade signs of desperateness, longing for one morsel of love, they still face misery and pain thereof. We call them unlucky, underprivileged beggars, poor destitutes, penniless and impoverished altogether, their identities unknown to everyone, the road to equality, their ultimate goal. A time came when I was face to face with these so-called outcasts and victims of circumstance and a bit unfortunate than the rest of the world in contrast. Little did I know these people were from different worlds than me, wanting nothing but love, a decent life, and belief in their, themselves, their only plea. I carefully watched their acts, movements, expressions, and words, totally different, distinct, unheard. Some with gleaming eyes, full of hopes, dreams, desires others with oddities, confusion, eyes full of blazing fires. Some caught daydreaming, being violent, some with a bit of wisdom, others vibrant, with lost eyes, confusion, shyness, flushed faces, teary eyes, wryness. Another world of so-called human beings, overlooked, discarded by society, what is a wise man, the truth, knowledge? A priest, philosopher, elephant, and outcast? Be there divine truth and equal vision for every being in every soul. Thank you. He's black, an ex-offender. I've known him since he was two. That's when his mother was killed in a car accident. He was raised by his grandmother in the projects. She drank a lot, but she did her best. One day she called me. A was acting up at school, so they put him in a straitjacket and sent him to Gabler. I used my chaplain status to break into this prison for children, mostly black, mostly from the inner city. He was eight and put in isolation. You could fry an egg on the floor. It was so hot. I got him out and sat with him. He wasn't talking, but he was listening. 
I heard the staff member coming up the stairs with some children. She was yelling, shut the F up. I gasped and then A spoke. She says that all the time. Later I went to a staff meeting. A was the main agenda. Despite what I said, they decided to go to court to have him made a ward of the state and placed permanently at Gabler. They didn't know his background. Mother dead, father in prison, it didn't matter. So I went to juvenile court, along with a good friend, a therapist, and court savvy. No books or toys in the waiting room for kids. Interesting. I made a note to myself, get some. The judge heard the story and decided against what was being proposed by Gabler. A could go back to his grandmother and to the projects. On weekends, he came to my home and built a lasting friendship with my kids over the years. His father was released from prison, angry but strong. He built a home for his children. He tried very hard. And then his heart gave out and he died. It was too late for A. <clears throat> Wrong friends, in trouble always, then in prison, locked up too long for charges that a white man would only serve months for, if that. Now he's out, trying to keep on the right path. We've been helping him to get through some red tape, but he has this idea that if he stays in the shelter, he will have a better chance of getting housing. The shelter puts him out on the street at 6 a.m. and opens the doors again at 6 p.m. I don't know if he'll make it out here. He has a job and gets paid under the table. But the other choice is to go back for free food and shelter. He spent the holidays with us, some beautiful days. We had great fun, lots of laughter with kids and games and family togetherness. What pulls at my heartstrings after a phone call or a visit is what he always says. Thanks, Aunt Dot. I love you much. I wonder what Dr. King would say about what's happening in this country. We've made some changes, but not enough. Change comes with justice and equality for all people. And then change comes from the heart. Maybe, someday, I hope. Thank you. On a cold December morning, snowy flakes tiptoeing down, wind whistling in the chimney. Ashes blowing all around There's a changing of the season Winter's calling out my name Saying bundle up and join me And we'll play the winter game Streets are covered in the whiteness all the houses bright and new Pretty as a picture postcard Winter color, winter hue As I step out in the darkness Waiting for the morning light Sipping on my cup of coffee wakes me from the sleepy night still it's not the same without you as I stand here in the cold I wonder how you're feeling since you've gone out on your own but you know I'm waiting for you my heart's calling out your name 
just to come and share the season and play the winter game. I would gladly be a snowman, build a snowman, be an angel in the snow. Skate I love you's on the meadow pond when it's 25 below. Make a fire to take the chill out. Hold you close and not complain. Tell me that you'll come and love me. And we'll play the winter game. Tell me that you'll come and love me. And we'll play the winter game. Thank you very much. And love is finally known by all we have given up to keep it. In its purest form, it is sacrificial, unselfish. It seeks the good of the loved, is boundless, has no end. It remains its own pleasure. Love is not always rational, doesn't always reason fully, doesn't always need a reason. It is fierce in its loyalty. Its desires are never evil. Love waits with patience, even forever. Thank you.